Thank you. All right, so welcome to MRAC's first ever Latinx created and centered virtual event titled Entre No Series, Twin Cities, Latinx Arts, Cultures and Communities. Tonight is the English virtual event version. Uh, this series came from direct community feedback from MRAC's Latinx community survey, which was distributed this past summer. Uh, where the top two requested services were virtual events uh, that were in Spanish and English. Um, so while we wish this, like the bilingual element could have occurred in one single event, um, due to technical capacity, we decided to go this route. Uh, in these two virtual events, we're hoping to highlight three Latinx leaders in the Metro while also providing information and connections. Um, Entre nos refers to between slash amongst ourselves. Uh, I wanted to create a virtual space slash series that made everyone feel welcome, supported, and in community. Uh, in the next slide, we'll talk about what you can expect tonight. All right, so we're gonna start with a quick introduction. Of, um, yeah, I'll introduce everybody, then we'll go Boricum Cultural Center uh, with Kenneth representing them today. Hedgy will go after the creator of Andaku stories. Uh, and lastly, we'll have Pamela, who is the author of Daniela y Mateo. Uh, at the end, I'll provide some MRAC resources and we'll have a QA. Um, as we transition from speaker, Sam will also be throwing in some questions in the chat so that y'all can get to know each other. Um, yeah, so feel free to use that space. All right, so our speakers, uh, Pamela is originally from Puerto Rico. She's a mother and children's book author who enjoys connecting communities through culture and literature. Pamela works full-time at Esperanza United, a nonprofit organization focused on mobilizing Latinas and Latina communities to end gender-based violence. Pamela holds a bachelor's in criminal justice and a master's in advocacy and political leadership. She most recently began pursuing her PhD in social work. Then next is Kenneth from Boricum Cultural Center. Um, this group organization is a St. Paul based nonprofit uh, whose mission is to create a community that empowers and inspires children and families through traditional Afro Puerto Rican music, art, dance, and song. The organization was founded in 1993 and has served hundreds of Minnesotan youth, adults, and organizations since its inception. Uh, the organization has carried out its mission primarily by developing and executing enriched educational experiences for youth involving the study and performance of Afro-Caribbean dance, drum and song. The organization's curriculum also encompasses adult dance and drum classes, youth painting classes, history and storytelling. All right, and then lastly is Hedgy, who's a creator on Docu Stories, uh, with the belief, well, Hedgy created on Docu Stories with the belief that no person should be discriminated against because of their lack of status. His goal is to create a new level of opportunity for undocumented artists to amplify their voices. Through community, we can build our own opportunities and break down barriers that many individuals face every day. So this platform is open to working with community these schools, businesses, and larger institutions, uh, they can help advocate for the creation of non-discriminatory policies centering the undocumented community. Uh, Undocu Stories is eager to advocate through the creative forms that many undocumented artists possess. Um, and then uh, my name is Mireya Espino. I'll be the moderator today. I'm a program director at MREC. Uh, I have some links here and links throughout the presentation uh, after the event, I'll share the PDF um, and the recording of this event with everyone. Um, so you can go ahead and explore a little bit more uh, about all the different artists and the organization, Bodican Cultural Center. Uh, and so under my image, there are some links to the National Association of Latino Arts and Cultures, uh, the National Museum of Mexican Art. And then I also dance at the UD Dance Studio. It is one of the only uh, Latina owned dance studios here in the Twin Cities. She's from Costa Rica. So if you ever want to go take some dance classes, um, yeah, there's a link right there. All right. And with that, I will mute, turn my camera off and pass it off to Kenneth.
All right, thank you, Mireya, and thank you, MRAC, for providing definitely this uh, channel of communication, be able to also uh, mention Borikin, right, cultural center to the rest of uh, other people and be able to get to know us. So here is a little bit about me before we go there, right? I am from Puerto Rico, uh, born and raised uh, there. Uh, there's a little picture that I have right there with the uh, Gallo, right, and El Hibaro taking there, right, little history from there. I've been in Minnesota for the past about five years now. I actually came because of the Hurricane Maria. Uh, I was thankful that I was actually a week before the actual hurricane impacted Puerto Rico. Uh, I was in Florida in vacations uh, with my family, and for that, right, uh, I worked for Medtronic, and when they found out that I was over there, told me to come work, work over here, and I've been here since then. Um, so little reflection there because, uh, you know, although something, um, I'm going to say something either bad happened over there, my house got either flooded out completely and we had to sort of start over something great came out of it. Right. So I was able to really come over here, start something completely new and love it. Uh, five years here four strong winters that have sort of survived. So it's been great. Uh, can't complain on that. Um, I'll, one great thing about sort of a, that I, I like I like to serve, right? To be able to provide back to the community, same thing as, as I was able to receive when I got um, to Minnesota. Uh, so when I got to Minnesota, right, uh, but it can re I reach out for our sort of a community and what it can really, you know, uh, gave something um, to me, be able to be able to go there and see some of the activities and the programs that they were able to do. And I felt like I belonged. Right. I felt like there was something there that I could connect back from my uh, from my island uh, from Puerto Rico. Uh, with that, I became um, I started volunteering a lot more and part of this board member of Borinquen Cultural Center. I also work in Medtronic. Uh, so my professional sort of experience is working in supply chain and project management. Uh, been there for the past nine years and within Medtronic. I'm also in part of the ERG, which is called uh, Hispanic Latino Network. And I'm a part of uh, that there, and I'm also a share. The photo right next to where it says community, that is our board um, members for Boring Ken. So you see myself, uh, my wife, uh, Jarira Serrano, here we got Marisol Chiclana and Omaira Chiclana. And uh, one great sort of fact uh, that I that I like on the bottom is that discipline is a bridge between goals and accomplishments, right? So anything you stride out to do can be sort of accomplished. You just gotta continue that stride. All right, so looking into Boarding King Cultural Center, this is our promise. This is our vision statement and our mission statement. And really what you, I wanna sort of make sure that is mentioned out there is that we want to connect right, our traditional Puerto Rican culture, arts, and music to families in Minnesota. If really what that means is that this is not only sort of Puerto Rican, it's to anybody, right? Uh, you get people who may have, may see some of these traditional or traditions or some of this culture and feel like, hey, uh, this is something that I also have, right? I also feel like this is something that makes me happy. I could be able to uh, provide this as well for my kids or just be able to uh, experience that culture. So we love to be, do these programs, be able to provide people to be able to learn either music or as well the other way around. We got artists that could, it's a way how to provide for them that could de demonstrate you know, their culture, demonstrate their arts, demonstrate their, uh, their music uh, through our platform. So um, what you have here is a lot of sort of the pictures uh, of some of the programs that we run. Uh, which is definitely great, either if it's food, is definitely, you know, um, our holidays during Christmas and the Three Kings, uh, baseball, any sort of way, culture is so broad, so open, right, that it could be done in so many different ways. Uh, so we bring either La Mascara de, de los Bejigantes, which is a picture there in the bottom, or we bring other people to talk about sort of the history as well from Puerto Rico. One fun fact that I, I must say uh, on this, I think being part of sort of an organization and be able to uh, participate in sort of all these activities uh, like this. I have learned more about my culture, have learned more about sort of the history and everything that is there. 
than I actually have would have learned from back in at, at the island. So it's a great way to to give, great way to sort of learn and be able to participate. All right, looking in here, right? Uh, I'm gonna um, show sort of what it looks like, sort of the what we do during the whole year. Uh, one, we have, uh, sometimes we invite other artists, um, either from the island and be able to provide. So here we have like Hijos de Borican. Uh, they provided, right, their music. They're so, so right, they're reggaeton uh, rappers. And they not only demonstrated their music uh, to over here to Minnesota, they're doing a tour, but they also went to, we had a program where they went to uh, charter schools, right? Uh, um, Spanish influence uh, schools and be able to provide Tell kids, hey, music is, has could be done sort of easy. So you make a sound uh, and you try to put that in a mix, uh, in a little mix and create, right? And they provided that for them. Uh, we also have, uh, what was mentioned, bomba drumming classes. So we have instructors that really know how to tocar la, la bomba. And they provide the classes. You'll be able to learn. You don't got to be a complete expert. You could be a complete beginner. You could have no rhythm at all, right? Uh, it's there. We provide that. It's open for kids, uh, teens, and, and adults. We do partnerships. Uh, so we have over there at the Afro Latinidad. We partner with Latino leads. Um, and we brought a Beto Torres, uh, a professor that comes from Puerto Rico, and be able to talk about where, how did uh, the Afro Latinidad came from, right? And how did it actually come uh, mixed with the music and provide that, that's something educational, something that you will learn. And we had that sort of connection. You learn from uh, not only for yourself, but your kids be able to as well make that connection there. Uh, we have fun activities. This is a fun program that I love to do. It is called Jugando, Boricua, uh, Jugando Pelota a lo Boricua, softball event, uh, which, Really, is just a hey, we're gonna we have a date that is set out there. We have music, we have food, and you come out and play, right? We have a kids game, we have an adults game, and it's there to 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 be able to meet other people, have fun. Um, I think this year we actually had a, a week and a Saturday that we got poured, like really, really rained on, and still everybody came, and it. All the kids, all you see is a big puddle, and they threw themselves on the puddle. And it all, it, it, in one that one moment, just sort of thought back, hey, I remember doing that back at home, back in Puerto Rico, where it rained and you had the conetas and you just threw yourself down there. So uh, it, it was something fun, uh, definitely, to do. We also uh, do a lot of, uh, we started this year with Cine Latino. So there is a festival, it's called Cine Latino, and they actually provide, uh, a lot of um, films that are uh, from all different, um, from South America or um, from Central America in Spanish. And this is a great place. So we're starting to, um, we started to sponsor with them and start to actually uh, next year, look forward to that because we're now we're having a, a closer relationship with them. Try so to bring a, a film that, that is from Puerto Rico and be able to provide it here for, for the people. Uh, we're running right now our fall program. So this is for uh, smaller kids uh, from the ages of since five all the way to 18. And this is where we divide. This is something that we're really sort of really proud of. Uh, we have an art, we have an instructor that provides arts, right? And be able to uh, work with kids and be able to not only do any sort of art, but an art that signifies something from Puerto Rico, that culture, right? If it's drawing, create a mascara from uh, Lo Be Gigante, something that resembles and provide a, a, this signifies this from Puerto Rico and to be able to make that connection, bring that music and, and dance. And at the end, we actually have a, a showcase to demonstrate for the parents or family that could come in and watch. And, our best activity, uh, and I'm going to say from the whole year, how we close the year up, is a Parranda Boricua. Greatest activity. If you want to go and hear music, you want to go eat, right? You want to go and, and, and just talk, this is a place to go, right? It's free. Uh, we love it. We bring in as well the three kings. So we do it like an inclusive, all three in one. Christmas, three kings, and the New Year's, right? Uh, all there. Uh, but the best way that you can sort of um, that pay us. So please do follow us. 
we're always trying to make that connection. Puerto Rico culture, art, music to all families, right? So uh, think about it. Uh, we have their Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Look at our page. We'll love to see anybody there. Please look forward. Thank you, Kenneth, um, for being here. I'll, I'll give a bunch of thanks during the event, but um, yeah, I feel like Los Puerto Ricanos, Breaking Cultural Center, y'all are hella leading the conversation around Afro-Latinidad. So um, yeah, and stay connected, y'all. If you want to learn more or um, everyone's sharing to their like contacts, social media. Um, so feel free to do that and then um, I will have some questions thrown in the chat, Sam, whenever you're ready, that first question. Again, this is just a way for us to know who's in this virtual space with us. Um, presenting can be, um, yeah, virtually presenting can be kind of lonely <laughs> if y'all don't have your cameras on. Um, but yes, we'd love to hear from you. So with that, Sam, oh, I see that you threw the chat question in. I'll read it out loud too. Um, feel free to share your names and discipline slash connection to the arts in the chat so we know who's in the space. Okay, with that, I will pass it on to Hedgie. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for being here. So today I'm going to talk about uh, personal uh, advocacy. But first, let me introduce myself. So my name is, uh, my artistic name is Hedgy, and I'm the creator of Undock Stories. I'm from Mexico City. So I came here in 2005, I studied fine arts and marketing. I graduated in 2005 uh, from Axbury University. So since I was a kid, uh, I always been around creatives. So that's where I came from. So with that, I'm gonna start with the power in our in your story or in our story. So again, welcome everyone. Uh, first, let me acknowledge that our stories are sacred. You may uh, you may ask why why is that? Because this this your own story like made you who you are today. Always use it with intention and never to self sabotage yourself. So a key point to mention in this conversation is that. Not everybody deserves to hear your story. Some people are not really into, really helpful when it comes to hearing your story. And sometimes like you may get attacked and get in trouble or, you know, some people are insecure or they have their own bias or who knows, and especially being a person who doesn't have the right documentation to be here, being undocumented, so sometimes it's very sensitive information that you share. So that's why I like always be careful with that. So as we share our stories, we can share our values too. Why all of these issues that I'm dealing with, uh, that we're dealing with uh, need a solution and how it affects us based on our values. It's also uh, important to mention to be careful when you share, when you share your story so you're not return, re-traumatize yourself. While you're, sharing, while you're sharing your story, sometimes you get stressed out because your body responds to the sensations that you felt uh, or you experienced these emotions in the past. So be mindful and be kind to yourself. So the next slide is planting seeds. So what I mean uh, when I say planting seeds, uh, it means having a really chill conversation with another person. Uh, asking about their personal values, things that they care about. They, they may have like some solutions already. So to the problems that they're facing or their, the problems they're dealing with. So maybe this conversation, you you also like can find other solutions if, if they ask the other person uh, for feedback in that sense. So one-on-one -on -one conversation are like very excellent for this point. So you know any resources also like you can share with this person if they ask, sometimes like they don't need anything. Uh, so just ask every time that you share or you say something like, please ask. Uh, with that, uh, if you are a person who holds a position in power, ask yourself, can I share this power with others? For example, like being a person who makes 
decision in decisions in an organization, and also like mentor younger generations. Everyone can be a mentor. The art of living uh, teach, teaches us many, many things that many of the youth are still hoping to learn. So uh, you can become a mentor. So to close this point, uh, find mentors for yourselves too and keep learning. And the next slide is networking. So you don't know how to do it, ah, no worries. I was in that position once and it's pretty easy. Uh, for, first, uh, you, you ask yourself like, what do I want to do for my future career? If you want to, for example, you want to be in our career, uh, ask yourself like what I need to do and how I'm going to get there. So one of the biggest examples that I always give for this uh, point is when I was in school, I, I'm a really huge fan of Luis Finn's graphic design work. And his uh, company is called Luna Branding, so I love his work. And there was one time that I had this assignment for school. And I reached out as an email, and I didn't think that he would respond because like, he's running a business and has a big company. And I sent it, and I didn't expect to hear back from him, but he he was like very uh, eager to have this conversation with me, to meet. And I got there, we have this conversation, and, and after like this conversation, um, I asked, like, do you know anybody else who do this type of work, or who can I connect with? He he uh, mentioned Javier Tavera. He's a really good. Uh, our photographer, he do portraits and he's amazing. So I connected with him and after that, uh, after each conversations, uh, hold on. <laughs> so we, I connect with uh, Javier Tavera and that's how my network work began, especially in our fields. Um, and after each conversation, just re-evaluate re what was mentioned in these conversations. Uh, if you got any resources, from the other persons, or you have any resources you share with these persons. So since since that day, it's been almost like four years ago that I met Luis Finch and Javier Tavera, and I just keep them in the loop. Uh, Javier Tavera is one of my mentors, and Luis Finch, like every time that I have a, a situation of have a problem that I want to deal with because he has more experience, I always reach out and he always reply to me. Uh, so yeah, you use it to your advantage. And the next one is going to be finding you people. I'm not Sandy Lawler. I'm with the city. So with all the knowledge for, from the last slide that I just mentioned, like use it. Uh, we can use this uh, this information to kind of go into this point. Um, so with that information, like. After you met this person, after you met this person, like and uh, ask yourself if this person like share the same values with you, can both shake things up and uh, when it's needed. Is this person willing to share resources, skill, and knowledge? Have a second conversation if uh, if the questions end on the positive side or all your uh, conversation went well, so you are able to join fund banking, especially like, you know, you just passed like this uh, election season, like uh, join fund, fund banking with organizations that match your values. And also like it's very, very important. You have the privilege, please, please, please vote. Uh, for the next uh, slide, it's called research institution values. And you may think like why this is important so for the simple fact that some of the organization only need us or to meet their quota, or they just like use our stories to kind of present themselves that they're doing something for the community. But with, when something happened in the community, they just like, we don't get any responses. Like for example, like when the, one, when the situation happened in Minneapolis with the George Floyd, many of the companies, organization, they post like a black square on Instagram. And after that, like the changes didn't even happen in these type of institutions. So that's why we have to be mindful. So research these research these organizations that are 
kind of advocating for us and like check what they have done in the past and how everything that they're doing right now, they're impact, they're impacting the future. It's also important to ask ourselves, am I fully myself when I'm in this organization? If you are not uh, inside of this organization you want to be in, also use the networking path to get in. And like at the end, like the last one is going to be accountability. So many of, like I mentioned, many of these organizations like pride themselves to be diversity inclusive, but their system have not have changed for for a minute. So with that, like how can I hold them accountable? How can we hold them accountable? These organizations also pride themselves to be my multi diverse entities. But what happens most of the time is like these org, orgs are diverse and inclusive and they're multi diverse, but only in the lower part of the organization. And the top is not. And the reason is like to ask this question is like who's in charge of this organization, who's making decisions in these organizations. Uh, with this, like I hope you got some some nuggets from this knowledge that I share uh, and share it with your close one. And thank you. Thank you, Hedgie. Um, hopefully the, this space is also a space where y'all can network, get to know each other. I haven't been looking at the chat. I'm looking at it now. Um, I appreciate everyone who's answered to that question. Like, what's your name? Discipline slash connection to the arts. Um, that's one question. If y'all want to share contact information, go ahead. Um, like I said, we have uh, this presentation will be shared out with everybody. And so you can link or get access to the links uh, to connect with the speakers here today. All right. So then our last like chat question, Sam, if you would throw that in, um, where's your favorite space to create? and or being community. So if y'all wanna think about that, throw it in the chat. Uh, and with that, we'll go to our last speaker, Pamela, I'll mute and turn my camera off whenever you're ready. Perfect, hello everyone, good evening. Like Mireya said, my name is Pamela Mercado Michelli and I'm gonna be talking about the power of community, how it has impacted my personal, professional, and artistic life. Um, can you guys hear me good? Yes, perfect. Um, so yes, I am originally from Puerto Rico as well. Um, I've been living in Minnesota since 2015, and um, I'm the mother of a beautiful and creative six-year-old, Daniela, who is one of the main characters in my stories, and we also have a dog named Mateo, so they're both real characters. I am currently doing my PhD in social work, and I'm in the process of publishing my second Spanish children's book um, titled Daniela and Mateo Viajan Argentina. Um, so the impact of community, I have learned that each person that you know knows a whole another world of people. So that's, ex that's extremely powerful um, because I've connected with people that have connected me to other people and so on. And it has, it, it has helped me um, in my, my professional and in my artistic journey, kind of getting the word out there of my book um, and everything I'm trying to do with my book. Um, so don't, be afraid to sometimes get uncomfortable if you're an introvert a little bit like me and meet people because um, it will always benefit you. A simple conversation can connect you with more people and opportunities. For example, um, I'm gonna share a picture, but my daughter actually takes part of the Borinquen program on Saturdays that was shared before um, So by Kenneth. So, I learned about that by someone um, and then I got connected and now my daughter is benefit, benefiting and celebrating and embracing our culture because someone introduced me to Bori Gang and, um, and connected me with Kenneth and all that. So it's very, very important. Um, 
if you don't ask, the answer will always be no. So just don't be afraid to ask. Um, we can always learn from each other. I have learned from a lot of people in my journey as an author, do's, don't, what I do want to kind of embrace and do and what I don't want to do. Um, it's better to be willing to do something than be completely ready. You're never going to be like completely prepared, know every single thing. So don't be afraid to make mistakes and get out there. And next slide. So here you can see a picture of me attending um, what a, one of Boriken's um, workshops with Beto, an artist who, this is like a full circle moment. When I was small, Beto used to be my art teacher. Like I'm talking about when I was like in fifth grade in Puerto Rico. And now he had the opportunity to come to Minnesota and teach us. So this is like the power of community. Um, and I listed some like organizations or ideas that you could begin connecting with, for example, nonprofits. Um, there's several nonprofits in the Twin Cities area that you could connect with. Um, maybe they have workshops, um, happy hours, like networking events. There's one that I shared yesterday um, that's going on tomorrow from a nonprofit called Latino Lead at La Doña. So there's going to be a lot of Latino professionals um, there. So that's a free networking event open to the public that you can attend and make connections. Workshops such as the one um, Kenneth shared earlier and the one I attended here with my daughter and my sister. And festivals, fairs, literally, I've been invited to... Um, like I've gone to the Crystal's Farmer's Market, anything that I get invited to and I have the possibility to go to the festival, the potato, I don't care, you give me the opportunity, I'll be there um, sharing the importance of literature and, and specifically Spanish literature and conser conserving our native language. So be open to, to attending different things, even though it might be out of what you're used to because out of all the events, I have attended, regardless if I sold a lot of books or a few books, they have connected me to other opportunities and resources. So, yes. And I invite all of you to connect if you have any questions about anything, the publishing process or anything in general, you could um, connect with me via Instagram or I could share with you my email as well. Um, you could find us Daniela y Mateo on Instagram or my personal Instagram Pamela Michelli. And yes, thank you. Thank you. Um... I see some messages in the chat, um, but what I wanted to say is, Babela, did you say you're an introvert? Because <laughs> I definitely think she's the most extrovert type of person. Like she is out there, not afraid to be at all of these different things. Um, I wish. <laughs> so um, yeah, okay. Well, that was our last speaker. Um, I just want to quickly go over some grant opportunities and resources for those of you in the space today, uh, and then we'll get to some questions. So uh, for those of you that represent a group or an organization, we have two grants that are still open. The first one is Arts Impact for Groups. That's due November 21st, 2022. So in like a week and a half or something um, by 11.59 p.m. And then um, that's up to $10,000. So then flexible support is another grant. It is up to 15. It's due February 13th, 2023 by 11.59 PM. Uh, for individuals, we have two grants up to $5,000. Um, so if you're an individual with an arts project, uh, so it, it would include like a community component. Um, arts impact for individuals is a great place to look. Uh, that one's due December 12th, 2022 by 11.59 p.m. Next step, funds, that one is for artists, uh, and that one's due January 9th, 2023 by 11.59 p.m. Again, we'll be sharing the presentation with people here today, so y'all can click on the different links, and it'll send you directly to each of the grant pages that we have. 
All right, and then accessibility. So applicants with disabilities, uh, English is a second language, or if you just don't have stable Wi-Fi technology, like we can work with you to find a different way to apply. Um, just contact us and we can think about how to make our process more accessible. I listed out some examples in case that's helpful. Um, so we provide documents suitable for screen reader software, translation programs. We're totally willing to provide our materials in Braille, large print, other formats. We can translate our documents into over 240 languages. Language Line Solutions is who we use if anyone wants to use them. We've translated our documents to, well, they're in English and then Spanish. We also got a request for Haitian Creole. Um, yeah, let us know and we can check with them to see um, if we have that language. And then um, you're also willing to, we're willing for y'all to provide your uh, responses to an application verbally. Um, so that's, we would record your answers and then uh, either share the recording with panelists or if they prefer it to be written, we can have it transcribed for them. Uh, and we do accept non-English written and verbal applications. So um, yeah, wanted to share that with y'all. Um, I'm also willing to present and talk. I do some partner events and do like English and Spanish presentations um, just to get people aware that these opportunities exist. Um, and if there is a technical capacity, uh, which some spaces have, we've also been able to create accounts through Foundant, which is where you would submit. Um, and even we were able to submit some applications this last time at Gluis. So that was pretty exciting to do with community um, to get that money out there. And then uh, I just wanted to share here two images. Uh, the first one is of found it. So again, that's where you would apply at MRAC. There is um, on the top left, a Google logo. And so you can change that to a bunch of different languages. Uh, it's Google, so not perfect, but it can help. And then uh, our website, there's a tab also on the left. It's, it says EN for English. ES for Espanol. So if you just hover over it, uh, it'll give you the two options. And then there's also uh, the disability symbol also on the left. And um, if you click on that, you'll have a list of different accessibility tools. So those are the two images there. Okay. With that, thank you. Thank you to everyone, the guest speakers for your time creating these presentations and sharing your wisdom with all of us. Um, I was when we were prepping for this event, we had the Spanish one yesterday and I was like, oh, I was taking notes. So it's they're speaking to all of us. Um, and also the audience, y'all for being here. This is the first time we do something like this. Um, please feel free to reach out to us, promote the resources, encourage people to engage with tonight's speakers, for example. Um, you can look out for Boricin Cultural Center events, purchase Daniela y Mateo um, for like a cute holiday or birthday gift and or contract Hedgie for resources and consultation to ensure that no person is discriminated against because of their lack of status. So with that, we have a good 20 minutes for any questions. I will stop sharing my screen. And then, yeah, we, I don't think there's too many of us. We could probably, you just want to unmute, ask your questions, go ahead. I'll unmute. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Raina Rios. I'm a local Minnesota actor, writer, indie film producer, just starting in my first year and a half doing some indie film producing. I'm really looking forward to kind of growing my career in that and helping produce more Latino stories uh, in a way that are that it's changing the narrative as opposed to continuing to highlight only the negative qualities of what we are. Um, so I'm excited to kind of share this space with you guys and just learn and network and get to know who you all are and I don't know find a way to work with each other at some point, I guess. So thanks for having me. 
Thank you for being here. Yeah. Feel free to share your contact information in the chat in case anybody wants to get a hold of you. I will. Hi everyone, um, I'm happy to be invited to this and introduce myself. Um, I had dropped an introduction into the chat, but for those um, listening in, my name is Laura Mimosa Montes. Um, I don't know most of you, but hi Marian. Um, I have lived in the Twin Cities for hmm, eight years. I moved here from New York. I'm New Yorkian. Um, there's so many Puerto Ricans here, so that's fun. Um, I am a writer, but I wanted to um, participate, extend myself as a arts administrator at the Jerome Foundation. Um, the Jerome Foundation, as I had mentioned in the chat, um, is a arts foundation based in St. Paul, Minnesota, that funds um, early career artists across multiple disciplines. So film, music, literature, visual art, dance, um, and um, as well as arts organizations. Um, in that, sometimes you'll notice like The Loft, for example, is an organization that receives funding um, from the Jerome Foundation to run its programs and also support early career artists and writers. Um, so that being said, um, I feel like I've gotten more familiar with the grant making process now being on the other side of working at a foundation and having read through many grant applications, um, as well as having experience sitting in on panels, um, like the Minnesota State Arts Board, for example, um, and reviewing um, grants um, that are written by administrators who work for organizations, as well as individual artists applying for um, artist project funds. Um, so I'm happy to connect and um, the best way to find out about the Jerome Foundation and um, open application periods is to sign up for their uh, mailing list, but I'll put my email in the chat as well if you want to follow up with me directly. And great to meet you all. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here um, and for sharing your, well, for saying out loud, you know, introducing yourself um, and yeah, sharing your contact information. Someone who's in grant making, Jerome, is yes, I know who you are. <laughs> so if y'all want to get connected, please feel free, please reach out um, to learn about those grant opportunities to get funding for your projects. I can um, follow up. It's good to see you, Lara. Um, and I'm also um, um, an arts administrator at the Loft Literary Center. Um, and so two of the Jerome programs that we um, manage are our Mirrors and Windows um, program for um, writers um, for children. Um, so that could be children's books, but also a uh, young adult. Um, and that's actually specifically for writers of color and indigenous writers. Um, but then the other one is our mentor series um, that um, works with early career writers. Um, and then um, we also, um, for more advanced, um, writers we have the uh, we administer the McKnight Fellowship which is currently open uh, the deadline to apply for that is November 18th um, so if, if you have publication credits um, I strongly uh, the but we are that round is for prose writers um, creative prose and and then uh, children's literature for children eight years and older, so kind of like middle grade or young adult. Um, it it, it um, alternates between um, poetry and spoken word and like kind of younger children's literature, um, like picture book stuff, um, and then uh, creative prose and older children's literature. Um, but yeah, but if, if you love literature, love reading, love writing, the loft offers classes 
as well um, as as well as events. Um, so I um, I'll put um, my email in the chat as well. Um, I um, I'm not Puerto Rican. I <laughs> I uh, my father is from Colombia, um, but I'm mixed. Um, and my mother is um, um, from Minnesota, Scandinavian descent. Um, so. <laughs> But nice to meet you all. Yes, please drop those links. And I actually attended one of y'all's events and shared that with Pamela. So um, yeah, we're definitely here. And I share, okay, I share things with everybody. <laughs> so if, um, yeah, you share your email with me, you might be bombarded with stuff but you can ignore me uh, just I read interesting things and I'm like oh y'all you should read this this is for you it applies or maybe look into this opportunity um yeah thank you for introducing yourself um yeah I open this up this is really space for y'all to get to know each other share more about your work I mean there's also artists in the space so if you want to talk about your career what you do go for it Well, my name is Jimmy Longoria. I'm the, uh, it appears from, from all the black hair, one of the oldest people here. Um, I'm a Chicano. And, and now it becomes really relevant since Cheech opened up uh, the Cheech Museum. So at long last, we're all optimistic that the art establishment will take Chicano seriously rather than treating it as a sub flavor of our diverse uh, flavors of Latina, whatever the heck we are this week. Um, I've been a longstanding critic of all of the foundations. So if you check with some of the oldest members in your foundations, you'll find, oh yes, that guy. Uh, but I am now able to sort of uh, brush the pin on my chest and say, you know what? A lot of you would not have the door open if people like me back in the 90s, which is the last century for all you people who are young, um, hadn't raised hell. Now, it's interesting. I celebrated my 68th birthday, and now I have another problem, another ism to fight, and that's ageism. And it's interesting because I'm beginning to discover it in our own community. Statistically, I think the average age for us in the big category of Latinos is 35 and going down. So I'm running into, a, well, he's a legendary artist, except, and I want to share this with everybody listening, is no, it isn't working that way. Um, as Minnesota's most cantankerous Chicano artist, I'm still emerging. And that's a thought for all of you who are creative thinkers to think about. Because if we were never accepted in the different decades, what does it mean now as we're coming into the point? And I'm blessed because at 68, I had cataract surgery and my vision now is better than when I was 21. Um, because I am a beneficiary of social security, I can afford to live in my studio, uh, which most artists are. So I don't have to have a day job. Um, so I'm now being my most productive. But again, I'm gonna run into the ageism from our own gente. So I wanna pose that to you. Now, those of you who are related to writers and um, particularly Reina, before COVID, I had actually organized the creation of, of a Chicano ballet. Uh, I got a grant and commissioned a um, composer to write the music. We were gonna be doing it in steps and stages. He was not really a composer of ballet, but a composer of opera. When he finished it and he turned the script in to me, I said, hey, um, how to go, what do you think? He says, we need to do an opera. So now 
I'm going to be alongside what I do visually. I'll be organizing uh, an opera. And I've got a crazy idea. I want to find poets to write the, yeah, good, good. JimmyLongoria.com. <laughs> Uh, the email is jimmy at jimmy Um The thing though, I want to share with everybody. The idea, it's an aging artist reaching out to his daughters to help him take on the big challenge. So they have to be literate in the last five decades of Latina Dot uh, so that the poets, and I'm looking for the different um, styles of poetry that evolved. Um, I have an enviable experience in having actually once not given a check to Sanda Cisneros because she didn't show up. So I didn't give her the check uh, back when she was in Chicago before she was the Sandra Cisneros. Um, but I understand the different periods of poetry and the idea that there are four daughters spread out over that so I'm looking for them, for poets willing to stretch themselves and write lyrics. So if you can spread the word, and then again, I'm Jimmy at jimmylongoria.com, or the easiest way is to go to my website and see what I'm doing. Uh, very interesting connecting with people. And the other part, if you ever run into the wall, you know, that Minnesota nice race wall in your institution? Let me know and let me know who. Uh, at being or in Minnesota since 88, a lot of the people who sit on the boards and a lot of the people that write the checks actually invite me to their homes to check out how Minnesota is doing. So it's an interesting thing for a gray old man to have that kind of a pull. And congratulations, it's so heartwarming to see all of you and be so dynamic and brave and courageous. Um, I just wanna to say to you, if you check around some of the people who are near my age, like you mentioned, Tavera and um, Ficho, um, I'm, I'm, the, I'm the coyote to them. And that's a story to be told which, uh, and Reina, um, I'm in an interesting place. If you know of anybody who is, wants to do creative factual writing, I need someone to write about the Palas de Miapa. Um, they are just simple painted shovels, but the people that possess them are extraordinary. And the next phase of the Palas is that I need to be able to make coffee table books, but they have to be very sophisticated. They need to have the background and story. The most significant pilot today is, of course, they'll all argue, but Sonia Sotomayor has the pilot in the chambers of the Supreme Court at a time she's extremely battled. And uh, I'm looking to find a writer or a set of writers who want to go and explore the idea of creating a tabletop book about the power holders. And I will go out and raise the funds. But let's see, that's about that. Also, um, at being, I, I'm glad, Edgy, that you, you mentioned about mentors. Um, when you go do the, you look at me at Jimmy Longoria, you also find out that I'm mentoring piece to our interesting, uh, we kind of invented the idea of mentoring people only we do it on steroids. Um, we don't teach anybody anything. We just simply say, what direction are you going? Uh, how are you doing? Stay alive and shut up and do the work. Uh, which is <laughs> kind of unnerving for most people. Like, I, don't you care about me? No, because you're likely to be dead if you don't work hard. Uh, it's still deadly to be an artist. I don't recommend it to them. But if you have any visual artists that say, I need somebody to show me what to do, I invite them to my house, I show them my studio, and I try to discourage them, become a banker. It's a lot easier. And right now, banks are looking for vice presidents, Latino vice presidents, and um, be excited about that. Also, those of you who um, 
are connected to Latino Lead, press on. We got to keep pushing. Latino Lead's been around for a while. Um, it is unfortunately the mercy of donors. We have to make a shift to our own. And welcome to Minnesota. What you may not know is we have probably a high concentration of Latinos that make more than a quarter million dollars a year. Kenneth, you had probably met some of them in, in your company. They're the people that we need to get involved in supporting our arts organizations because from the very inception in funding here, they always leave you with a 15 to 30% shortfall in your funding. So you're always doing mediocre work or uh, cutting your own throat. And that's experience. Uh, but please, let's cultivate our high wage earners to support the arts. So no snooty attitude towards them. Okay. Uh, and uh, friend me and uh, like me in LinkedIn. Um, because I'm investing in my own social media. And the goal, the objective is to create a network. Um, my brand is I am the Chicano Arts de Minnesota, which means I'm the regional leader in visual arts in the area. Of course, Ficho and Taveras and all those other people and Dougie will go like, well, no, no, he can't do that. But I'm the Chicano with an O. And in art, what that means, it's definitive. And Kenneth, if you ever visited, uh, but you're gonna run out of time, but you should visit um, uh, Melissa Fra Senator Franzen's office. It's all Longoria, uh, which is an interesting thing with the Puerto Rican superstar doing with Longoria in her office. Um, and the answer is, si se puede. So thank you all. and. Let's network in reality. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, I yeah, was over here listening and I'm like, oh wow, we have a whole minute and this event ends. So um, there's activity in the chat. Um, Jimmy, I sent everybody your website and then um, some offers to join different organizations. Um, or to be a part of different networks. Latino Lead, like Pamela said, is having their networking event tomorrow at La Doña. I think she said six. Um, but yeah, let's stay connected. Again, thank you to everyone for making time for tonight's event. And with that, I will let y'all go. Enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Nice to meet you. Bye, thank you. Bye. Fantastic event. Well done, Mire and Sam. Sorry, I was muted. All right. Give me a second.